good people of YouTube, Mountain Patton here, and today we are going over five tips to help you become a better player in World of Warships. And these are five pretty simple things that you can do that will have a huge impact on your survivability and your success in the game and your impact in the match overall. And this has a lot to do with the commander rework, especially how higher tier matches go now. And, I mean, we all know it, it's a mess, a lot of long range sniping. Uh, CVs are, well, still CVs, but AA got nerfed yet again with the commander rework. And speaking of AA, our first tip has to do with AA. So, as we all know, we have about three options when it comes to defending against planes. The first option is using our priority sector skill where we can select a sector uh, by looking at one side of the ship and hitting the, well for me uh, it's mapped to the tittle key which I believe that is the default key for this mechanic. And what you want to do with this is make sure that rather than just setting it to the side that the planes are attacking you from, set it to the opposite side. Because what's going to happen most of the time is that the CV will burn their engine boost, they'll burn their engine boost consumable, they'll burn their heal on the run up to your ship. Which means that they will be spending more time on the other side of your ship. And we want them to be spending as much time as possible in our focused AA. So by setting it to the opposite, opposite side of the ship, most of the times, those planes will be spending more time in that side of the AA, and if you have your your sector set there, they'll be taking more damage on that side of your ship. And this was a hard thing for me to break from, and I still mess up with it every now and then, because it changes the notion that AA is supposed to stop the attack. And that, that notion should have gone out the window for all of us after the CV rework. Before the CV rework, you could use AA to completely stop a CV's attack, but now with the ability to dodge flak and just the planes being controlled by humans and AA being AI controlled, it doesn't happen unless you have something with absolute god tier AA now. So by doing this, you're ensuring that those planes are taking more damage. And you have a greater chance of shooting those planes down since you're dealing more damage to them. And sure, you may only get maybe one or two more planes by using this method but that adds up over time and this is especially so if you in a ship that doesn't have the best AA ever which is a lot of ships now because with the removal of the old BFT and AFT you no longer get a boost to your AA when you spec into secondary builds so German battleships and even well the Ohio, Georgia, Massachusetts and the Shikishima when they are secondary builds you at least got a pretty decent boost to your good boost to your AA. On the Shikishima, that was very good because the Shikishima has pretty darn good AA, along with, of course, the Massachusetts and Ohio and Georgia. But you don't get that boost anymore. So you don't really have the god AA that you used to have. So, again, you kind of have to adopt the same line of thinking and use that method. Now, of course, if you're in something like a DD, it's a lot easier to keep the planes on one side of your AA. There should be a, a small end clip that you, you should be watching here where I do this quite well. Now, granted, it is a Lexington, which is a tier 8 CV, but you guys should see the effects quite dramatically here when they when those planes get stuck in that concentrated sector. They just drop. And again, it is a small and has good AA, but still the concept will apply to any ship with their AA. So make sure you guys are doing that. Make the CV pay for hitting you and hitting your allies. Alright, the next tip is that you guys should be going stern in. What that means is that when you're approaching a cap, instead of pointing your bow toward the enemy team, or not even when you're approaching a cap, when you meet the enemy team in battle, you want to have your stern pointed toward them and be shooting at them across your shoulder per se. So, you know, have all your guns rotated to the rear and be shooting like that. Because you have greater control over your ship, you have a lot more mobility, and infinite more juking abilities sitting stern in to whatever it is you're shooting at or stern into the cap, rather than sitting bowing. Because now, you can throttle juke much better, and throttle juke is when you throttle up a little bit, 
then you change your speed, you know, maybe you go up to like three quarters, drop it back down to one fourth, drop it back up to like half, then maybe you crank it to full for a few seconds and you drop it back down. You have infinitely more speed and maneuverability doing it like this because you're pointed away from the cap so you can scoot back and forth a lot better. Plus now, if it goes sideways on that cap or on that flank, you can just run away very, very easy. Because if you're bow in, you're pretty committed to that cap at that point or to that flank. Because in every ship except for destroyers, if you want to turn around, you have to show them your citadel. So if the push doesn't go as well as you hoped it did, or the flank doesn't hold as well as you hoped it did, you have to turn around or just throw it in reverse. And in every single ship in the game, reverse is far, 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 far slower than full ahead so if you're already in that position you can just gun it and just get on out of there and plus in some situations it's actually a little bit better for tanking uh, because your enemies they don't really expect you to do this too much most of the times when they see you pointed away from the cap they assume you're th you're just going full throttle so if you sit like a one quarter speed in this position it will throw off the enemy shots by a lot and not not even throttle you can just cruising at one quarter speed so you'll you'll be able to tank a lot more in this situation rather than being bow in because bow in sure you may be in reverse but that's easy to tell that you're going in reverse when you're pointed away from the cap it looks like you're selling away from the enemy team to them they you might look like you're going full full uh, full blast it's hard to tell sometimes especially on some of the more open maps when there's not you know a lot of islands or the ships around to compare your speed to it'll throw their shots off a lot more and again that's without even throttle juking and plus you can sit angle too and you know uh, unless it's unless you're facing you know, something like a thunder or a yammy was i believe in the clip you're watching now i was so yeah, there's not, not too much you can do against guns of that caliber, but still, you can still sit angled and bounce shots from other ships as well. And again, you're just so much more maneuverable in this position, and you can, if you need to push, throw it in full speed ahead, crank the rudder hard over, now you're bowing, now you're pushing. Takes 30, 40, 50 seconds if you're in a really slow battleship, you know, minute 30 if you're in the Vermont. So you're still there. You're, you're tanking for your team. You're distracting the enemy team. Because, um, again, a lot of people that you run across, their aim isn't that great when you present them the situation. I mean, any of us who have shot French cruisers, French cruisers love to do this. They are very excellent ships for this. And this can work with battleships, cruisers, destroyers. And this is something that you see in competitive a lot. Ships will go straight into the cap. They'll slowly creep toward it in reverse. Just tap the cap, cap it, and then bolt out of there. And it works at randoms just as well. Now, of course, sometimes you'll have so many ships shooting at you that no matter what you're doing, it uh, it won't work. But again, it's a lot more maneuverable position, better for your team, better for you for the most part. And again, if you need to push, just flip it around real quick, and you're going right on in. So our third tip kind of goes hand in hand with tip number four, and that is in the opening of matches... Don't we all love being spotted when the match starts? I do. CVs make that a wonderful experience because they can spot you in like freaking 15 seconds. There's no issue with that. But if this does happen to you, turn out. Don't turn in, turn out. Because like I just said with tip number four, when you turn into something, you're pretty committed. And especially in the age of Deadeye, when there's three Deadeye Thunderers just waiting for someone to mess up, and you turn in too early because you were trying to dodge shells, and you want to turn back toward the cap that you were selling toward, you have to show that team broadside. So now the three Deadeye Thunderers are going to be blapping your broadside in the middle of your turn. There's nothing you can do about it. However, if you turn out, You'll dodge the shells just like if you turn in, because, you know, if you turn in, you'll get under the shells. If you turn out, you'll force the shells to fall short because you, you aren't there anymore because you turned away from that spot. And you're further away from the enemy ships. You're no longer closer to them. And plus, you don't have to turn around. You're already sailing toward 
the back of the map, which again, you know, I'm not saying just don't keep selling toward the back of the map, but you're selling away from the enemy team, and if the CV's not sticking around, you won't be spotted anymore. But even if the CV does stick around, you're now selling away, you're stern out to the enemy team, and you're in that superior maneuver maneuverability position. Oh, also, um, I forgot to mention real quick, the stern out... I'm sorry, stern in position I was talking about. If you're in a ship with a transom stern, so like the British battleships and some of the higher tier British cruisers, it can still work, but just be mindful you get that flat stern that if a shell does pierce through there, you're going to have a bad time. So you may just want to, you know, wiggle around a little bit, make sure that they don't hit that transom stern exactly. You know, it's, it's a hard thing to do to hit at range, but again, with Deadeye, anything's possible, and some really, really good players with some really, really, really good aim might be able to make it happen. But again, at the ranges that we're talking about, it eh, probably won't happen. Anyway, back to tip number three. Sorry, I forgot about that. Um, but yes, make sure you turn out. Make those shells fall short. You're further away from the enemy ship. You know, the further away you are from the, from the target, the harder it is to hit that that target. So doing all those things just makes just just makes you a harder target to hit. And again, you'll live longer. You won't waste any hit points on you know getting slapped in the first two minutes of the game. You know, I'm sure we've all been there. We're playing a, a cruiser or something. You know, we just get slapped from across the map, especially now with Dead Eye. And now we're down to like half of our health. You don't want that to happen. And turning out will cut down on this quite a bit. And again, if you're in a ship like a Soviet cruiser or a ship that's a good bow tanker and has weak sides. Many times when you turn into a target, turn bow into a target, you're done. You're screwed. You're stuck in that position because you can't turn. Because your detectability is too much and your side armor is too weak and you're kind of screwed. So again, make sure you guys are turning out. Second tip is to turn your alternative interface to full. So you do this by opening up the settings screen. You can do this right in port right now if you're in port. And you want to turn, oh, well, you want to go to the control panel first. And then you want to click the interface drop down menu and click full, adaptive full, I believe is what it's called. And that is how you get all the names of the ships on screen. You get all the health bars that are expanded at maximum all the time. You don't get just you know the, the, the little um, slim bars above the, your, the friendly and enemy ships. You get the ranges, the flight time of your shells, the terrain indicator, all that good stuff on your reticle. And that information is very, very, very useful, especially in high tier matches. And plus, you also want to turn the ship names on the map on. You do that by clicking the gear icon above the map and clicking on. Also, in the menu as well, I don't know how many people know this, but there are plenty of reticles in the game. There are a lot, and they vary quite a bit in design and functionality. So take a look through these reticles. Maybe play a match or two with uh, the ones that interest you. See which ones work for you. Might help you out. May, might help your aiming a bit out. Um, I stick w with number two. It's the one I've been using for years now. Plain and simple. It's the one I'm used to. But, you know, try them out. i tried out a couple of them. Yeah, some, some are better than others in my opinion. Some of them look really, really wacky. But again, try them out. See what works. Might help you a bit. And there's also the adaptive one, which will scale with your uh, sight zoom. That's pretty nice. So try these out. See which ones work for you. Might help with your aim a little bit. Give you a little bit more point of reference. And might help you out. Alright, finally, the last tip I have for you guys is always have an escape plan no matter what class you're in cruiser battleship destroyer i guess it really doesn't matter with cvs as long as your plan just you know avoid all the aa ships and the flak but all surface combat ships need to have an escape plan for whatever situation you're going into remember this is the thinking man's action game so you always want to be one step ahead of your enemy especially if you're in a push like what you should be watching right now. I was going to go up to the corner of this island and see if I could sit here, see what was going on, and then maybe push around. But turns out the enemy team and most of the enemy team <laughs> was all around the corner of this island. So I didn't even make it there. So I had to go to my escape plan, which was to just turn around and try to kite and see if I could get them to follow me. I could farm them and pull them away from my team. And 
it worked. Now, yeah, it sucked because there was like two Thunders and Henry, a Shimakaze, a Goliath, and a Kabaldross all chasing me and like the two guys that were with me, but it worked and I managed to drag them. Kite, they took the bait, and I managed to inflict a fair bit of damage on them before they finally gave up on chasing me and my GK. That's nothing about German battleships too. People see them, they just go, ooh, big damage numbers, it's a pinata! And they'll chase you and they'll try to, you know, just beat you for all your health points, but don't worry, you're a pinata with a bigger stick, and you can beat them back. And it's not just, you know, a situation like this, like, you know, oh, I'm going to do this and try to, you know, beat the crap out of the enemy team. If you're in Destroyer, it's like, okay, I'm going into the C cap. Uh, let me see, let me see, you know, where can I zip into cover real quick? Where's my team at? What's the fastest route I can take to get back to my team? Where's the nearest exit from the cap for me? Things like that. You have to be thinking about those things. Because, again, I promise you, if you're doing that, you're already like two steps ahead of the enemy DD. Again, unless he's like a super unicum. But doing that, having a plan you will more than likely come out on top most of the time. And again, this is random battles too. So if you're being more tactical than the enemy team, which isn't a hard thing to do a lot of time th these days, because the tactics these, these days are just, you know, sit back and snipe <laughs> for, 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 uh, for the most part. So if you do that, have a plan, follow through with it, stick to it, and you know your ship, you'll do quite fine. Alright guys, so these are just five quick tips, and most of them are pretty simple. Actually, all of them I would say are pretty simple. Make sure you use them. Might help to relieve some of the pain of high tier matches. They've been working for me as much as they can in high tier, you know, trying to counter the uh, Deadeye meta. But again, that might be changing all very soon. But even if you remove Deadeye and the Commander rework from the equation, these are still some really solid tips to follow through on and try out for yourself. And if you guys got any more tips for anybody, let us know in the comments down below. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. We just passed 23,000 subscribers as I was recording this video, so thank you guys for that. Uh, many of you have been asking what the next giveaway is going to be. That is going to be for 25,000 subscribers, so 2,000 more. And we'll do another three high-tier premium ship giveaway. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you're having a wonderful Monday. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.